The Monerotopia Weekly News segment is sponsored by WizardSwap.io, a non-custodial cryptocurrency exchange. All right. Uh, so to start off, uh, this was mentioned earlier. Happy to announce that at KQL users sees the Wait, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing anything. If, oh, it might be. Uh, let me check the stream. Yeah, go ahead. Share your screen. Did you add your screen to this yep. stage? Yeah, it's you. I see it on stream already. It's just you. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. Wait, let me I'm ask, did you play the uh, intro? Because I didn't see it I on did. my side. I did. Yeah, I think you're you're, okay. you're just not getting oh, some wow. of the, okay, the data. Yeah. Yep. All right. <laughs> All right, yeah, so uh, we covered this earlier. Um, we saw our biggest single day purchases ever. I'm pleased to see that our users are using Cake for not only holding, sending, receiving, swapping debit card, gift cards, but also for using this Fiat Unwrap, uh, which is cool to see um, that people, and I mean, yeah, that kind of echoes what Body was saying is that the crypto sentiment now is like for just people in general is just buy the dip, buy the dip. That's That's like huge. It's like been the sentiment for a little while now. So individuals, when when like institutions and um, larger like holders are are dumping and you know doing certain movements, uh, individuals will usually take advantage, and that's exactly what we saw happen in Cake Wallet on that day. We had single our biggest single day purchases ever, and I believe that goes across all of the. That's like aggregated data from all the on ramps that we provide inside Cake Wallet, and I don't know. I don't have specific data points on exactly what people were buying. Um, we only, you know, we only have data and so much of that, um, probably for a good reason. But I would like to believe, um, and this this is very possible. This is highly possible based on previous evidence. Is that it was mostly people buying like Coin to Swap to an arrow because historically that has been the largest amount of volume that we've moved is people buying Litecoin and then we have an insane amount of Litecoin to XMR swaps happening in Cake uh, also um, and those two are definitely connected so cool to see cool to see uh, next up we have uh, this tweet from uh, Mark what's his face just an email from just just an email from Proton Privacy saying they are reviewing Monero after their podcast with Seth for Privacy so basically, Proton updated the status of a couple of feature requests that are on their website for, for Proton. They have a, a dedicated feature request website you can go to and suggest stuff. And Monero payment option has been there for a really long time, and it has thou like several thousand upvotes. Uh, and for whatever reason, Proton has just not... Like, it's literally one of the top voted features on the feature request website. And for some reason, Proton has just not added support for paying for Proton services in Monero. Uh, but recently, they did move it from no status to under review, which is cool to see. I mean, they've kind of said a lot. They've kind of had a lot of talk like, oh, yeah, thanks for taking your feedback. You know, all the typical jargon haven't really done anything. So this could just also be that they're just keeping people on the line. Uh, but we'll see what happens uh it would be also be nice if they would consider adding monero to their new bitcoin wallet which i'm sure was covered here a couple weeks ago while i was gone at the bitcoin conference um uh and this is in reference to seth's uh opt-out podcast episode with the ceo of proton uh so it would be it'd be cool to see if they at the very least added monero payment option that'd be incredibly helpful and that would really uh show that they aren't you know just just privacy larping like a lot of people currently believe they are um and of course the responses aren't all super happy like the martian stop it they're not considering it they're forming their letdown speech <laughs> don't you dash my spirits like that yeah i kind of tend to fall on this based on previous actions of proton they seem to do a lot of good stuff but also they just seem to also kind of larp it away and decide just oh, yeah, i'm just going to ignore the actual privacy uh, coin right for our privacy products like supposedly we're super privacy but we're not going to let you pay with it for a privacy coin you have to use the most transparent coin because it's the biggest one whatever yeah i kind of agree with body here they know it's making them look bad so they have to pretend not to larp yeah yeah I, i'm not i'm not not to not to be a black pill i just don't really have my hopes up too much but we'll, we'll see what happens we'll see what happens um i appreciate someone like seth who's kind of able to bridge the gap while also asking some legitimate you know serious questions um and if you haven't seen his review his uh his podcast 
Not Reviews podcast episode with the CEO of Proton talking about uh, the Proton Wallet. Um, he does ask some interesting questions. I don't agree with all the responses from the CEO on why they decide to go with Bitcoin, but um, appreciate Seth being able to try and bridge that gap there. Uh, and next up, we have this article, this this interesting article that's had a lot of criticism. Uh, this was mentioned earlier. Uh, there's this article that's basically uh, an interview on Zuko of the. Uh, he was one of the, the founders of Zcash in the, the company that's behind Zcash. Uh, and this, this tweet specifically is from Zeno. Atrocious journalism calling Monero a zombie blockchain is laughable. Monero is the cryptocurrency of choice on darknet markets, the largest P2P markets that depend on the cryptocurrency. Uh, and this is an interesting uh, interview because it's actually an article on Forbes. Um, and I can go on here to see let's see if i can actually get to the article um i didn't have it open already in forbes usually won't let you immediately view them oh okay i, mean, I got lucky there's a uh, oh you got lucky okay no uh, <laughs> no i did not it's okay i just pulled it i was gonna say there's another yeah. that link that link i shared you yeah should have the archive link in it this is how you know i i have a I'm, I'm someone who uh, prefers my privacy is that I have to solve captures every time I go to a website. This is the life of a privacy advocate. And they're using, oh, I, I totally missed that one. And they're using the worst captcha system ever, which is Google's reCAPTCHA, which is just absolute garbage. And I probably, wow, okay. I cannot believe that actually went through. All right, let's check if we can query for this. And apparently they don't have one. Oh, that's great. Let's go to archive.org here. Archive.org probably has it. Really? Oh, it's probably because of this extra. Let me remove this extra crap at the end. That's probably what's causing it to not show up. There it is. All right, here we go. So this is this is a like an article interview on on Forbes under the Forbes Digital Assets uh, category, uh, and oh, I'm getting blocked on here too. Oh well, oh well, that's fine. Uh, if you want to look through this article, um, there will be hopefully a working archive.org link in the description. Um, it's essentially sort of an interview with um, Zuko, who is the CEO of Electric Coin Company, um, and talking about its history and what's going on with it now and talking about how it's kind of a zombie blockchain, right? Um, and there are some interesting responses to this. So this one particularly is from Fluffy Pony. Uh, I know we're all laughing at the Cardano community note on this, but the Monero commentary is egregious. Why Stephen... Eric penned his love letter to Zuko is beyond me. By comparison, Monero averages 17 to 28 transactions per minute, nearly an order of magnitude larger than Zcash on the top end. Image 2. And people are paying for this at an averages fee of 6.3 cents USD per TX. That adds up to $1,542 to $2,540 USD a day in fees over and above the block reward. 50 to 85x the fee revenue on Zcash. It's absurd to call Monero a zombie blockchain and quoting your own article from March claiming that it is does not make it so. That sort of self-referential garbage does not benefit a journalist of any level, any integrity, or of integrity. Steven, it's time to do better. You're embarrassing yourself and the entire industry with this level of pandering. So basically, uh, they were talking about how Zcash is a zombie blockchain and trying to revive it. And that's probably uh, some of the pump that we're seeing with Zcash recently is this Forbes article. Um and as you can see here, here's an actual yeah, screenshot yeah. from the article. One thing is clear, eight years in, few people actually use Zcash. The protocol earns about $30 a day in fees and processes just three transactions a minute. Its total fee revenue of 2023 was only $14,000. Additionally, while tokens such as Bitcoin and a prominent derivative such as Bitcoin Cash are up 250% and 200% since the market bottom in November 2022, Zcash is still down 18%. 
and this is after the token surged 64% in June. At its peak in 2021, Zcash had a market capitalization of $3.5 billion. Today, it trades for less than $500 million. It's not alone in its struggles. As Forbes pointed out in March, numerous billion-dollar crypto zombies roam the digital landscape blockchain zombie monero another privacy coin developed in 2014 has a 2.7 billion market cap but like zcash almost no one uses it or pays fees and then that's the tweet that we just read here where filthy pony completely destroys that totally bullshit argument uh and you can look at the the actual monero transaction graph um you know you know we're not hitting the peak that we had during that attack uh march uh may june um or june this actually may have been organic i don't totally remember uh but we're sitting around twenty five thousand transactions a day which is not nothing right and i don't know if he had attached a um a graph of tux can you hear me yep yeah i mean one of the did you read the article were you able i obviously you can't read you weren't able to put them now but did you read it before? no i i didn't have pretty... no okay I yeah i recommend people check it out because it's um obviously oh, the journalist who's writing the journalist who's writing it was like clearly benefiting from writing this article, right? It's not like journalism. It's like a tough. He's like getting paid, Z-cat. basically. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, but it's it's interesting too. Even even like trying to make it sound good, you read the article, and anybody with you know a few IQ points would read into it and be like, "What the fuck?" Like, <laughs> I mean, basically, Zcash is described as you know, uh, it's like a startup, right? With with that with venture fund backers and. They they were they were upset with kind of the performance of what Zcash. So now they're trying to pump it back pumping. again. Yep. Yeah, it's essentially what's going on, and um, the the biggest difference between Zcash and Monero, like even more so perhaps than the technology, is just the way the projects are 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 uh, run by the community in Monero, right? Being truly open source. And what you see in Zcash, which is really um, a group of, of founders and funders that back the project, right? Mm-hmm. And, it's, mm-hmm. it's, and that, and that, and that like, really is the, that is the primary difference between these two projects. And it's interesting to see how that's played out, right? And because of Zcash's, um, you know, the way it's structured, it's evolved in a way that actually uh, tends to 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 make this design decisions that bend the knee, right? Because it's they're trying to integrate with with the fiat world in such a way where they don't want to be too disruptive. To get their money back, they're back, yeah. Right, they're backed by real funders, where really, like we're, you know that 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 stand to lose money, that also stand to whatever, perhaps like risk risk you know crossing some legal lines because they're part of this project and that's affected their design decisions and that's really the fundamental difference and i mean yeah i mean i I totally agree with that that's kind of my my view on how zcash has been also is that i i've never hated zcash i mean i kind of like zcash it was the only other um like pro i guess somewhat prominent privacy coin and it's all it's had cool technology and now it's actually in a pretty great state like i was i was quite against some of the way that it was set up before having a trusted setup and stuff. But in its current state of shielded Zcash, it's actually pretty good. And Zcash has always been a little more on the edge, uh, whereas Monero has always taken more of a conservative approach and um, trying to be more, I guess, battle-tested using stuff that's that's more more tested in terms of technology than Zcash. But it's always been cool to see what Zcash has been able to do with using slightly newer stuff. Uh, and in its current state of shielded Zcash, it's it's actually pretty good to my own understanding. Uh, but it's a shame have how like the company behind it is set up, and of course all the funding that went into it, and how it's kind of just become left out because of some of these things and some of the past history, and then the fact that well, yeah, it's unshielded and shielded. Just by doing that, you've immediately made it incredibly complicated for people to use. And there's like a bunch of address types now. It's become quite complicated, whereas Monero is incredibly easy. Um, so yeah, it's in a way it is a shame, but that's just how it was set up. And now they're trying to get their money back, and so they're gonna do what they can to 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 pump it. So it is. Yeah, it is. they they uh, they are in a position to pump because they are integrated with exchanges because of these design decisions that they've made, right? So yep. we'll, we'll see. Unshielded for... only from exchanges. But don't don't give into it, guys. Don't don't pump Zcash. You know, it's like don't don't do them this favor. That being said, um, would love to have them involved 
in the conference. If any Zcat, I've said this before in the past. I don't know. Maybe we get Zuko to come down. I, d- I highly doubt he would ever do that, but uh, would love to get some Zcash folks involved in the Neurotopia. All right, moving on. Uh, so this is, I think this is uh, the last article I have. Um, this this also was mentioned earlier. Ripple to pay 125 million in penalty in XRP case against the SEC. The fine was not nearly the two billion the SEC sought. The judge in the case, though issued an injunction requiring Ripple to register if it intends to sell securities in the future. Federal Judge Wednesday ordered crypto firm Ripple to pay slightly more than $125 million in penalties for improper release selling its XRP token to institutional investors. The total was far below the nearly $2 billion the SEC commission sought, uh, but also well above the $10 million ceiling Ripple argued for in an April court filing. The fine represents... Remittance for 1,278 transactions that Judge Annalisa Torres said violated securities law. Torres denied the SEC's request for Ripple to disgorge more than $876 million in profits from XRP sales and pay $198 million in interest and in an in $876 million penalty. She did, however, issue an injunction Wednesday requiring Ripple to file a registration statement if it intends to sell securities in the future. Uh, so, yeah... It, Seems like somewhat of a victory for for Ripple in regards to what the SEC was trying to go for, uh, and this is definitely this has gone on for a long time. Uh, legal action between Ripple and SEC has stretched more than three and a half years, uh, so this has gone on for a while, and it looks like it's finally come to a close. And seems like somewhat of a win for Ripple, uh, considering the circumstance that they were under and and what was going on. Uh, but yeah, that's that. So. Maybe Ripple will pump a little more if you want to try and do a swing trade on Ripple. Uh, who knows? I don't know anyone that actually uses Ripple. I've never used Ripple myself, but if you're into that, I guess this is good news for you. And with that, I believe that's all the news I have today. <laughs>